How's it going guys, my name is Dom and today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can post messages from a embedded iframe up to your main website, all right? Now this here is gonna be really straightforward and you can post many different types of data but it's likely that you wanna post up an object. Now it's also important to mention that this here is gonna work across origins and it's actually, yeah, an, an important detail. Now, the reason why it's important is because you're probably in a situation where you own a website or web application on a particular domain, but you want to embed an iframe of a different application or a different service, whatever it is, and that service might be related and you may own that service or website which means you can control the code that runs, which then means you can, of course, communicate up. I mean, if you're watching this video, it's very likely that you're in that situation, right? And you need to post some data up. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, in order to simulate that, that situation of a, uh, a main origin or a main web page, and then something else running on a different origin or different servers, I'm gonna be using uh, Python's built-in web server. So I've got here two folders, an embedded website. This here is gonna be embedded within an iframe. And I'm gonna be running this one here, again, using Python's web server, which gives me a unique port number to run it on. And that there is gonna be the different, the, uh, the differing value of the origin compared to the main website, which runs on VS Code live server extension on port 5500. Remember, the origin is made up of the protocol, the host name, and the port number. In this case here, the protocol and host name of localhost is gonna be the same, but the port number is gonna be different, giving us that different origin effect. Okay, so let's begin inside the embedded website. I'll stop talking and we're gonna be writing some code to push a message up, all right? So within here, I'm going to first create a new button with a type of button and an ID of, let's just do btn send message. This button here is going to send messages to the parent uh, website, which is embedding this one in an iframe, okay? Let's get a reference to that button inside the JavaScript right down here by simply using a query selector for the ID of btn send message. Then down here, we can just say btn send message dot add event listener. Let's listen for the click event. And within here, we're gonna be running some code, of course. Now, as you may have guessed, this code, when the button uh, gets clicked on, is going to post a message to the parent, okay? I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna run Python uh, web server to get it running on uh, my local environment. So I'll just say here, Python 3 web server on port five, sorry, 4579. Press this and now if I go in the browser, we should be able to see here my website and yeah, it's gonna work perfectly fine. So we have this, this, uh, this separate website compared to this one here, which is running on, again, uh, you know, VS Code's live server extension. Different host name actually, and different port number. So we have that two different origins, two different websites situation going on here. So what's next? Well, within here, we're gonna write some code. We're gonna say window.parent.postmessage, uh, okay? So window.parent refers to the uh, the parent window or the parent web page, which is embedding the iframe. Okay, we can now say post message. What message are we going to post? You can put almost anything inside here. Uh, please refer to the documentation to find out more about what you can. It uses structured clone to make a copy of any objects that you pass in. So that's a bonus. But yeah, you can pass in whatever you want. Basically, I'm going to pass in here an object. Okay, actually let's pass a simple string first. Let's just say a string of decode, all right? Then we're gonna also require a target origin. This means what origin must the embedded website be running on in order for the message to go through, okay? Now, the reason why this is important is because, well, if for whatever reason your code ends up running on some other origin that you may not trust, 
those messages are not going to be sent up. So it's a bit of a security measure. But in this case here, I'm going to pass in the wildcard of an asterisk. But again, in your case, it's probably better to actually pass in the origin at which this server, sorry, this website intends to run on. Okay, so pass an asterisk inside there just for development purposes. Um, I'm going to save this and then go back in the browser here. And if I click on this, nothing happens, but that code did run and that message got posted. But the problem is there was nothing to listen for that message. So what do we do? Well, we add a listener to this site to listen for that message. Okay. Now, of course, a obvious problem before we even do that is that there is no embedded iframe yet. So let's embed that iframe. We're going to say iframe with a source of uh, HTTP localhost running on port 4579. And let's give it a style of a border of five pixel solid black here just to make it stand out a little bit more. I'll save this, go back in the browser here on the main website. I can now close this one. We don't need it anymore, right? So on the main website, we have now embedded that second uh, app or second website. If I click on this, again, nothing happens still. So let's fix that by going down to the script tag in this main website. And we're gonna say here, basically just uh, window.addEventListener. We're gonna listen for the message event, okay? We're gonna grab onto the event object and then we're going to simply console log what this is. Console.log ev. Save this back in the browser and now we've completed all the code that is bare minimum to get this working. Click on this and we get the message event, okay? So if I expand this, we can see there's a lot of detail about the event that has happened, just like a standard JavaScript event. The stuff that you care about is going to be the data. There we go, decode, that string came through from the, uh, from the iframe and the origin, okay? Before I jump into, uh, you know, having a look at the origin and, and of course the data, I want to quickly mention that, you know, I used a click event here on a button, but it's likely in your scenario, other things are going to trigger the message up. Maybe when new data comes back from an API, you want to post it up or something like that. Whatever it is, guys, of course, um, basically, you know, you simply, yeah, call this function to post the message up wherever you want that to happen, okay? So what is important about the origin property on the message event? Well, it's important that you verify where it came from. Again, another security thing. I would say, you know, never to trust messages that come through uh, without checking the origin first. Again, you probably know what, uh, you know, what the origin is of your secondary service, your secondary website, because it's in your source here. You have to specify in your source, so you probably know what it is. And this just means that when you're inside the event handler, you want to say, look, only run the code if it comes from a trusted origin that I know of. If ev.origin does not equal uh, HTTP localhost, what was it? Let me go back here. This one here. If it doesn't equal this, then yeah, just return out and don't do anything, okay? Otherwise, you can log out the, uh, the data. Perfect, right? Save this back in the browser, click, and there we go. The data is being logged out. Of course, do whatever you want with the data once you've got it, okay? Fantastic. So that's basically, you know, all you need to know for the most part. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that if you have React DevTools uh, enabled on your uh, on your uh, Chrome, it's probably going to post through a bunch of messages, which again kind of proves what I was saying just then about checking the origin, right? Because um, yeah, you never know what kind of messages your website could be receiving. Um, yeah, make sure you always check the origin. Also, let's have a look at some objects as well. So just quickly here before I finish off this video. Uh, let me just quickly post an object. So let's do something like this. An object saying a type of example event. 
and then also we're going to have here a data property there we go and i'm going to say here something like yeah and another object i'll say id of abc123 and a username of decode so just yeah just some sample data pretending to um, be some sort of like user event or something like that right so now go back in the browser click here and yeah we have this so we have the the actual object itself you don't need to use json parsing to get the object you simply yeah access it directly and i've also used this data and type schema here just as a bit of a bit of a best practice in a way because um if you have multiple events coming back from your iframe you want to be able to differentiate them in some way and yeah using a type property would allow you to uh, perform some sort of like switch case say look if it's this type of event then do this with this data if it's this type then do this instead so um, yeah that is all for this video hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something if you did make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next video